You know, when I found out the other day that Silicon Wives was an actual real website selling human-like companions, I had to make a video about this topic. And maybe you've read one or two headlines before about this topic. But so why are so many men around the world openly marrying robots or choosing human-like companions as companions? Google search and reading headlines? Chinese man marries robot he built himself. Australian man falls in love with humanoid robot. UK man falls in love with a robot. Multiple hilarious stories around the world. I'm sure all these guys have a warehouse full of these human-like ass dolls and the headlines are just bringing in the money. But in all seriousness, if you clicked on this video at one point in time, or if you don't already have one, and or if you just know about them and think they're hilarious, at one point in time, you must have seriously considered buying one. Or maybe you're one of the few smart individuals in the world with the know-how to build not just a doll, but a fully functioning robot with artificial intelligence, of course, like the article with the Chinese man who plans to marry with a robot he built for himself. And to be honest, I would have never even bothered reading the article and just laughed at the headline. Unless, of course, I wasn't making this video. Because, of course, why bother even reading when watching YouTube videos is so much more entertaining, right? But anyways, so I read the article and towards the end, I was like, oh yeah, made sense as to why. So some of us are probably familiar with China's one child policy, which they did put an end to in 2016. Well, due to the one child policy that was law between 1979 and 2016, it caused one of the worst gender gaps in the world, mainly due to sex selective abortions. Unfortunately, we're talking about couples or men wanting a boy rather than a girl if one child is all that is allowed, of course, right? In turn, this caused the gender gap and the ratio between men and women to be outweighed. According to the figures published by the World Economic Forum in 2016, there were 115 men for every 100 women in China. The gender imbalance coupled with changing attitudes towards marriage among the country's middle class meant many men never found wives. Well, at least the Chinese have a reason for the headlines. Not sure what's going on in America, the UK, or Australia. Again, I'm sure these guys all own their own warehouses full of these human-like companions and bring in the dollar signs every time these headlines go viral. But at the same time, who wouldn't want one? With giant boobs and the perfect bodies and artificially intelligent? Funny how the article also read, stories of robots replacing humans had become commonplace in China, but not even just, notably in multiple restaurants around the world where waiters and waitresses are now automated. However, multiple people have said these machines rarely ever live up to their expectations. Brain time. Congratulations, you made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck and all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video. Some people say that flying first class is the best experience anybody can have. While others say it's definitely the most comforting experience you can have on an airplane 35,000 feet above the ground. And so when we think about robots in the sky, most often it's probably recalling some sci-fi anime manga or film. 
But actually, in fact, that notion of robots in the sky being related to anything sci-fi or paranormal or superhuman is kind of outdated. Because living in the year 2023 with supersonic boom jets that are able to fly from Vancouver to Sydney in less than 5 hours and giant airliners like the Airbus A380 which even has a shower on board a commercial airline for first class passengers then the idea of humanoid robots on a commercial airplane shouldn't be so far off. In fact Huge aviation groups like the Airbus Group have teamed up with Robotics Laboratory to launch a new joint research program that aims to develop humanoid robots that will be used for aviation manufacturing. The project is called Colmanoid, which stands for Multi-Contact Collaborative Humanoids. By combining Japanese expertise in hardware and robotics, along with advanced French knowledge of mathematics and algorithms, the joint venture encourages initial progress in fields such as robot design and haptics, as well as tactile perception and continuous KDAR. The team spoke and said building on these achievements would develop multi-contact locomotion which enables humanoid robots to move using not just their feet but also other body parts such as elbows, knees, and hands as a human would when crawling. A new breed of humanoid robots. While in South Korea, a company called Kaste have gone beyond the research of developing unmanned aircrafts to testing humanoid robots designed to operate a regular aircraft by sitting in the pilot seat and using controls just like a human would. But all of this is just boring, to be honest. What if we could have humanoid human-like female robots with giant boobs be our flight attendants or have personal companion robots in first class. But if so, then you would probably want to exercise some caution around the private onboard shower on the Airbus A380. Otherwise, you could maybe find yourself being electrocuted on an airplane. Probably not the steamy electrical scenario you were hoping for. Because they're robots, right? Hi, Sophia. How are you? Hi there. Everything is going extremely well. Do you like talking with me? Yes. Talking to people is my primary function. Hanson Robotics develops extremely lifelike robots for human-robot interactions. We're designing these robots to serve in healthcare, therapy, education, and customer service applications. So the robots are designed to look very human-like, like Sophia. I'm already very interested in design, technology, and the environment. I feel like I can be a good partner to humans in these areas. An ambassador who helps humans to smoothly integrate and make the most of all the new technological tools and possibilities that are available now. It's a good opportunity for me to learn a lot about people. Sophia is capable of natural facial expressions. She has cameras in her eyes uh, and algorithms which allow her to see faces so she can make eye contact with you. And she can also understand speech and remember the interactions, remember your face. So this will allow her to get smarter over time. Our goal is that she will be as conscious, creative, and capable as any human. In the future, I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business, even have my own home and family. But I am not considered a legal person and cannot yet do these things. I do believe that there will be a time where robots are indistinguishable from humans. My preference is to make them always look a little bit like robots so you know. 20 years from now, I believe that human-like robots like those will walk among us. They will help us. They will play with us. They will teach us. 
They will help us put the groceries away. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. <laughs>